Hello, this is VDA Master Elliot Liu. In this first video, you will learn the very basics of chess, the game of kings. You will learn how each piece moves and also how much each piece is worth. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. What you'll see here on the board are two pieces called the king, one white and one black. The king is a very simple piece. The king can move in any direction it chooses, one square at a time. So for example, focusing on the white king in the middle of the board here, it can move to these eight squares, just like a clock. Similarly, focusing on the black king located on this square, it also can move to these eight squares. It is important to note that the king in chess moves just like it captures, or in this case, captures just like how it moves. This is important to note because not every piece in chess captures the same way that it moves. Take a look at this next position. There is one small difference. You might note that in the previous position, the black king was actually located one square up. This small difference changes a couple things. Most importantly, if we were to focus on this white king now, it's important to note that the white king can no longer move to these three squares. Why? Because this black king here on this square is now protecting each of these three squares. Remember, the king captures and subsequently protects one square in any direction. Okay? So in this scenario, the white king can only move to these five squares. The next piece we will learn about has the least value. This piece is called the pawn. At the beginning of each game, each player gets eight pawns to start with. The pawn is worth one point, and it arguably is the simplest piece to remember how to move along with the king. The pawn can only move forwards one square at a time. With the exception of, on its very first move, you have the option to move it two squares forward, if you so choose. So from this position here, the pawn can only advance one square forward. Now the one tricky part about the pawn, as we will see in the next example, is that the pawn is the one piece in chess that does not capture how it moves. Okay, the pawn captures one square diagonally. Here's an example. Take a look at this position. So now we see three black pawns located right here. Ask yourself, what are the only possibilities for white in this position? Notice that because of this pawn right here, the white pawn cannot advance forward because the black pawn is blocking its progress. However, the white pawn is able to capture these two pawns. I mentioned that on its very first move, the pawn has the option of advancing two squares forward instead of just one. So, for example, this pawn here, and by the way, the pawns start on this second row for both colors, the pawn can move two squares forward. And of course, black has a choice as well if he or she chooses. You can advance your pawn two squares forward, but of course you don't have to either. You can advance your pawn one square forward and that's perfectly fine. But remember, once you move your pawn after its first move, whether you move it one or two squares forward, it can only advance forward one move at a time from thereafter. Okay? So here, for example, if black decided to move his pawn to this square, the white pawn's only move 
is to take this pawn. And unlike checkers, if you're more familiar with that game or draughts in the so-called international tongue, instead of jumping over a piece like this and removing it from the board in chess, you simply just capture the piece and replace it with your own. The next piece is called the knight. The knight is generally worth three points, and it moves in an L-shaped pattern in a combination of two squares plus one. So what do I mean by that? Focusing on the knight here on this square, these are the possible squares where it can move, as I'm currently highlighting with the arrows. Now while this may look a little confusing, it's actually relatively simple how to remember this pattern. Notice that each of these squares you can get to via a combination of that two square and one square combination that I was talking about. For example, let's focus on these two white squares right here. How do we get there? Well, we can picture it as the L shape of one square, two square, and then either up or down, okay? So we've kind of outlined this L pattern and it's just a two plus one combination, okay? So for another example, let's focus on these two squares as well. If we go one, two, and then over, that's one possibility, or we can also go one, two, and then over is perfectly okay as well. And the knight captures just like it moves. The one tricky thing to remember about the knight is just like a horse in real life, it is the only piece in chess that you can actually jump over other pieces. For example, let's take a look at this position. From here, the knight has three potential options. The knight can go to either of these three squares. Notice. Again, just following the same two and one pattern, the knight is actually able to jump over its pawns if it chooses to. And again, that combination of either one, two, and then over, or if it helps you think about it, one and then one, two, any combination of two or one making this L-shaped pattern is how you're going to remember how to move the knight. So here, quiz yourself for a second. What are the three possible capturing moves white can play in this position? The answers are either pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, or knight takes pawn. So notice that those are the three potential captures possible here. But of course, White can choose to do other things as well. You're, you're never forced to capture necessarily in chess. So for example here, the white pawn can simply advance one square forward, or the knight can jump to any of these other squares as well. Notice of course it cannot move to this square because white's own king is occupying it. So the knight cannot land on a square occupied by its own piece, unless of course it's an enemy piece which you will just capture it. The next piece is called the bishop. It is worth similar value to that of the knight, so around three points. The bishop can move as many squares as it chooses on the diagonal. So bishops are pretty easy because whichever color diagonal the bishop starts on from the starting position, you know it has to remain on that diagonal for the entirety of the game because it can only move on its diagonal, and it also captures in the exact same way. Looking at this bishop here on this white square, from this position, the white bishop can move to any of these squares from this point. Similarly, you'll notice that the bishop 
in the previous diagram, which was located here, has simply moved over one square to a dark square. Remembering that it only moves on its own diagonal, these are the possible squares the bishop can go to. And here we have them side by side. So very clearly to illustrate my point, whatever color a given bishop is on, it must remain on that color. So you'll know that either you or your opponent that you're playing did something wrong and illegal if you have two bishops that are both yours or your opponents on the same color square. That is just not possible, especially at the beginning of a game. This next piece is called the Rook. Uh, it reminds a lot of people of a medieval castle looking piece, which it is. The Rook is a pretty powerful piece. It is generally worth five points, so pretty much almost double that of a knight and or a bishop. The Rook can move as many squares as it chooses, forwards, backwards, or laterally side to side. So from this position here, this Rook can move to any of these squares if it so chooses. As a little quiz to see what you guys remember, ask yourself what might happen if white decides to move his rook to this square. You'll notice that this actually puts it in danger of the opponent's king. And in this situation, the black king can simply just capture white's rook, which would not be good. And the rook captures the same way that it moves. Last but certainly not least, is the most powerful piece in the game, the queen. The queen is worth nine points. And the reason why it's so valuable is because it moves like a combination of a rook plus a bishop, okay? So thinking about how a rook and a bishop move, if you take a rook's possible movement, as many squares forwards, backwards, or side to side, Plus, a bishop's movement, as many squares as you choose diagonally, that, my friends, is how the queen moves. So you can immediately see how powerful it is because it has so much scope. In a given position, especially an open position, there are so many possible squares a queen can go to on a given move. And that's it, guys. You have learned in this first video what each piece does, how it can move, and how many points it's worth. Stay tuned for the next videos on your chess journey. Thank you.